Okay, um, anyone has any uh, questions? So I, I just handed out old quizzes that, that were handed back before, but some people never took them. So uh, 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 if you have, uh, your, just look through the, uh, the papers that I gave. If you find your quiz, keep it. Um, otherwise, uh, you probably have all the quizzes back. Um, okay, so uh, today what we want to do is uh, try to finish chapter uh, 10. We probably can't finish it, but we are, we are going to finish it almost. Um, so chapter 10, uh, chapter 10, uh, right before I came to the class, I sent you an email, and in the email I gave you the homework from section 10.3 and 10.4. I think yesterday when I gave you the homework, I probably made a mistake, because I think I said I'm giving you homework from 10 point, did I say 10.4 or 10.3? Yeah, I probably gave you homework from 10.4, but then I said it's from 10.3, mm -hmm. probably. So uh, th today I sent you an email, I made it clear what problems are uh, assigned from 10.3 and what are assigned from 10.4, okay? So on Monday, we will, I, will, uh, I will go over a few more exercises, and if you have any questions from the homework, I can answer those too. Um, so today what, what we want to do though is, uh, uh, today we, uh, we, we are going to continue with uh, section 10.4 and uh, the topic here is, I'm going to call this uh, polar, uh, polar uh, region and it's not a standard uh, standard term but I'm going to use that so what do I mean by polar region um, let's let's make a sketch here what happened to Oops. Okay, so let's uh, let's make a sketch of the kind of region that I'm talking about. So let's say I have my uh, x a horizontal axis here. Okay, and let's say this is the uh, let's say this is the origin here, 
and uh, let's say I have a um, angle alpha which is given by this so let's say this angle here this angle here is alpha and let's say I have another array <coughs> which is oops which is given by this array and let's say uh, the angle from here to here that's beta and let's say I have a curve and the curve looks like this so uh, look at the curve between these two points uh, let's say this this curve is the graph of the function r is uh, r is uh, f of theta r is f of theta so if i look at the function r is f of theta in polar coordinates the graph of that is given by this uh, this curve uh, the question is uh, the question is, let's say, I want to know uh, what is the area of this region, okay? And so A, let's say A is the area of this region, and I want to know what's, what is that, what is that area? Uh, so what we are going to show today is that this area is given by an integral and the integral is from alpha to beta okay of a half of f of theta half of f of theta squared d theta so if I have an if I have an area, a region region like this, now think of the region in the following way: the polar axis, as the polar axis moves from angle alpha to angle beta, as the polar axis moves from angle alpha to angle beta, it is sweeping through the region. Okay, it is sweeping out a region. Uh, bounded by this green curve and that's the region uh, that we are talking about and, and the area of that region is given by this integral uh, formula here now the question though uh, is uh, how how do I know uh, first of all that's the that should be the integral so in order to understand that uh, what I what I want to do first uh, is the uh, following uh, let's say I have uh, we need to recall something from uh, something from uh, some some facts about circles so let's say I have a circle uh, let's say I have a circle here and let's say the circle has radius uh, let's say the center of the circle is right here and let's say the radius uh, the radius of the circle is uh, let's say r i star uh, why am i calling it r i star doesn't matter at this point i'm just denoting the radius by that but i'm using it because i'm going to use that notation later so r i star is the radius and let's say i have a sector of the circle and the sector here is subtended by the angle delta theta so delta theta is the central angle here and i am looking at the uh, looking at the slice or the sector of the circle subtended by this angle delta theta everybody is okay so delta theta represents that central angle everybody is clear on that my question to you what's the area of this sector what is the area of this sector the the area 
of uh, the area of the sector of the circle of radius uh, R I star uh, subtended by by the central angle uh, delta theta okay so what is this area anyone can anyone tell me what is that area of the sector well if delta theta is 2 pi what is the area if delta theta is 2 pi what's the area was that yeah if delta theta is 2 pi then you're getting the entire circle right so what's the area of the entire circle pi times the radius squared right so that's the area if delta theta is 2 pi but but it's not 2 pi it's delta theta if the central angle is not 2 pi it's delta theta then what should be the area well I divide it uh, by 2 pi and multiply by delta theta right by the ratio of the central angles and so if I if I do that what do I get I get half pi cancels out ri star that's the radius squared multiplied with delta theta so that's the that's the area of a sector of a of the circle of radius ri star uh, subtended by an angle delta theta if the central angle is delta theta then the area of the sector is given by half of radius squared times the the uh, length delta uh, theta now here I'm assuming that we are using radian measure okay uh, just just always take uh, 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 measure of angles to the radians okay? everybody's okay or, or with that it, for this formula to work theta has to be in radians okay any questions on this fact everybody's okay now let's go back to our question is I have this polar region and I want to show that the area of this region should be given by that integral formula okay so why is that the case so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, notice that for this polar region theta the, ang the uh, angle so, sorry the theta values go from alpha to beta right for that region theta values go from alpha to beta so I am going to think of that as as an interval from alpha to beta so here is alpha and here is beta and I am going to divide this interval into smaller sub intervals that is I'm going to pick a partition of this interval so so alpha would be theta 0 and then I'll have uh, theta 1 here and then theta 2 here uh, theta 3 here dot 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 at some point I am going to have theta i minus 1 and I'll have is that mine? it's something else? I thought it was my laptop's noise or something okay theta i and then this is uh, theta n minus 1 and beta would be theta n so how many sub intervals do I have here anyone knows how many n of them n there are n sub intervals this is my i th sub interval between theta i minus 1 and theta i that's the i th sub interval now um, let me uh, so what I'm going to do is in each sub interval 
I am going to pick one number. So uh, here I'm going to pick theta 1 star. Here I'm going to pick theta 2 star. And here I'm going to pick theta i star. Here I'm going to pick theta n uh, star. So in each sub interval you pick a pick a point. These are called sample points. Now let's look at the polar region again. Let me make another polar uh, region here. So here's a uh, say it again. Oh yeah yeah. Go ahead. Let me know when you're done writing it down. Uh, if you have questions, just raise your hand, and I will. Uh, I'll try to explain. Uh, explain again. Okay. So uh, let's draw the uh, polar polar region again. Uh, so. So let's say my polar region. Whoa. Okay, and let's say alpha will be drawn uh, like this. Uh, beta, I will draw it like this. And my curve, my curve, let's say, um, how did I draw it before? Okay. So, close enough, I guess. So, let's say that's the polar region that I have. And in order to, uh, uh, let's see how we should be approximating the area. So, what I'm going to do, remember this is alpha. This angle here is alpha and alpha is theta zero and this angle here is beta and uh, beta wa beta would be theta n okay uh, what did I do oh untitled page that's the problem with tablet some Okay, so here's uh, what we are going to do. We are going to remember I picked theta 0, theta 1, theta 2. Each value of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 will, will correspond to a point on the curve, right? You realize that? Because what is this curve? This curve is R is what? F of theta, right? So for each value of theta that we picked in the partition will give me a point on the curve. So let's say, uh, what are those uh, points? Let's say I have one point uh, right here. Okay, so let's say this point here, that corresponds to uh, the point uh, R1 comma theta1. So this is the point I get for theta1. This point here that I have, I get it for R0 theta0, okay? Remember, theta zero was uh, was alpha, um, and I can pick another one. Let's say this point. This point here is uh, R two, theta two, right? You see see the point, and I'm going to keep doing that. And for the ith, remember when we took the partition of uh, alpha beta? At some point, I had the ith sub interval, right? Each sub, so what's happening is that the first sub interval between theta zero and theta one is giving me the first uh, first uh, segment here. So this segment that I have here, right, that segment corresponds to the first sub interval. You see that the first sub interval between theta zero and theta one it corresponds to the region that I highlighted. Okay. <coughs> 
The second segment that I drew, it corresponds to the second sub-interval. So if I keep doing that, at some point, I will get the i -th sub interval. So let me draw the i -th sub interval here. So the i -th sub interval will give me this segment, let's say. So this point here will correspond to theta equals to theta i minus 1. So this point would be r i minus 1, theta i minus 1. Here I have dot 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 because I, what I mean I have all the other uh, sub uh, sub intervals, and this point here let's say is is R i comma theta i, right? So this uh, segment, uh, the segment in red, the segment in red corresponds to the i th sub interval, right? And of course, uh, then I have uh, dot dot dot, and the last one would be the nth subinterval will correspond to, let's say, this segment here. So this point here would be uh, r n minus one, theta n minus one, and this point here would be r uh, r n theta n. Remember, theta n is the same as beta, okay? Theta n is the same as beta. Theta zero is the same as alpha. Is that making sense? So I divided the polar region into smaller regions, right? Okay, and I want to approximate the area of each segment by, by the area of a sector of a circle. Because each segment looks like a sector of a circle, right? Each segment here looks like the sector of a circle. So I am going to approximate the area of each segment uh, by, by the area of a sector of a circle. Now what circle of what radius, right? So let's concentrate on the i -th sub interval. In the i -th sub interval, remember I picked theta i, st I star? That theta i star will correspond to, let's say, whoops, uh, where is drawing? The theta i star will correspond to, let's say, this point here. So this point here uh, corresponds to theta i star. So that means, let's say, this point has coordinates r i star, comma theta. I star. Everybody's okay with that? The theta I star is between theta I minus 1 and theta I in the i -th sub interval. So that, let's say the point corresponding to that is R I star and theta I star. I am going to approximate this i -th segment, this i -th segment, I am going to approximate it by the area of a sector of radius r i star subtended by the angle uh, what, which is, well, I forgot to say, let's say the, uh, the length of each sub-interval here is delta theta, right? The length of each sub-interval, let's say, is delta theta. So then, what's the central angle for the i -th segment? For the i -th segment, what's the central angle? What's the central angle for the i -th segment? What is this angle? What's that? Delta theta, because I divided, if, uh, uh, what I said, I divided uh, into sub-intervals having the same length, delta theta. So uh, we are going to approximate this, we are going to approximate this by a circle, let's say, so this segment that I have here in red, so I am approximating the area of this segment by the area, okay, so let me write, let me write it down. Uh, the uh, area, area of the i -th segment, i -th segment, and we are approximating that by the area of uh, a 
sector uh, of a of the circle of uh, radius uh, R I star subtended by subtended by delta theta. You guys understand what I'm saying here. The i -th segment, I'm saying, let's approximate the area of that by using uh, the ar area of a sector of a circle of radius r i star subtended by the angle delta theta. And what is that area? We computed that area, right? Remember this fact? The area of a sector of radius r i star subtended by delta theta is what? That's equal to half r i star squared times delta theta, right? You guys are okay with that? Now remember what is uh, what is r i star? Can someone tell me what is r i star? r is f of theta, right? <coughs> r is f of theta, so r i star is what? r i star is f of theta i star. So I am squaring that multiplied by delta theta. So this is for just for the i -th segment, right? But I should be adding my approximations for all the segments, right? So if I add them up, so I have to be adding I, I going from 1 through n, half of f of theta i star squared delta theta. So I am adding my approximations for all the segments. And is it clear that the more segments I have, the better approximation I have? So allow n to go to infinity. So n is the number of segments I have, right? So the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, that should be the area, okay? That should be my area as n goes to infinity. The area of the polar region should be given by the limit. However, that limit is what? That limit is the Riemann sum, right? But it's Riemann sum of what function? That limit is the Riemann sum of what function? <coughs> well, this should be the integral from alpha to beta. And because it's the Riemann sum of the function what? Half f of theta. Right? If I have this function, the Riemann sum of that function is exactly that sum. So I, I, I integrate with respect to d theta. With respect to theta, sorry. So that's how I know that the area is given by the integral. Everybody is okay with that. So what you need to memorize or remember is that uh, Usually what, uh, usually what people would write here is that, uh, to remember this, you are, go you are integrating half of, f of theta is basically r, right? So you, you are integrating a radius squared, right? Remember r is f of theta, so you're integrating a half of r squared with respect to theta. And so that's what you need to remember. So let's say I have the following question then. Uh, and you, your homework has several questions like this. Let's say find, find the area, find the area uh, bounded, uh, let me say, 
find the area of the region bounded by bounded by R is 1 plus sine theta I want to remember what's the what 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 was the graph of this equation yesterday we looked at the graph of this equation right what was the graph of this equation it's a cardioid right it's a cardioid so uh, what we want to find is what's the area inside that cardioid okay now can someone tell me what is the answer if I have that the area inside the cardioid is A, what is that area? What's that area? What's the area of that cardioid? Can I think of that as a polar region? That polar region that you have, it is, remember how, how I said you should view this, view this polar region? As, as, as theta goes from alpha to beta, the uh, polar axis is sweeping through this region, right? Now, the, in the case of the cardioid, uh, the polar axis is sweeping through the region inside the cardioid as theta goes from what to what? 0 to 2 pi, right? As you go from 0 to 2 pi, you are sweeping through the entire, you're sweeping through the entire region inside the cardioid, right? Only once, right? Only once. So the area is given by 0 to 2 pi half of r squared d theta and in this case we have that r is 1 plus sine theta squared and that's it, that's the integral that gives you the area, yes? You need the one half still. Yes, I do need the one half still. Where, where, where did my half go, right? Have you guys watched the movie? Where, uh, there was a movie, it's called, uh, Where Did My Car Go or something like this. Yeah, yeah something like this. <laughs> Now, here's something, and I'm not lying about it. Here's the story, I'm not lying at all. Uh, I'm in grad school, and this is, uh, usually I, I, I don't drive to, to campus, so I, 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 uh, I usually walk to campus to my office when I was in grad school. But sometimes I would drive, so this was one, one day, I think probably it was this Friday evening, so I, I drove, there was a, a after Friday, the parking lots are free. So I, I went there, there was a garage, I parked it there. Oh, no, it wasn't a weekend, sorry. It probably was Thursday or something, and after five, the garage was free. And I, I, I went there, I parked my car, I went to my office, I was working, and for some reason, I was pr at the end of the work day, I was probably happy. So I came back home, okay? So I came back home, and I, uh, you know, I just went to sleep. I, I woke up early in the morning because I had to go and teach at the 8 a.m. section. And so I, I, I went out of my apartment complex. I was looking for my car and it wasn't there. And for like 15 minutes, I was very, very confused. And, and I was about to call the cop, what happened to my car. And then uh, after some time, I realized that I probably left it at the garage. So, so then I, I, I ran to the, to the uh, uh, garage and found out that my car was still there. But I had a ticket by that time. <laughs> so, all right, so, um, uh, you know, you can forget pretty easily. A car is not that big of an object, right? <laughs> right. So here's, <laughs> uh, okay, so area is this, everybody is okay? Everybody's okay with that? All right, so here's uh, how you compute this. Zero to two pi. Uh, I'm going to take the half outside of the integral because it's just a constant factor. And uh, what should I do? For the one plus sine theta squared, 
substitute with R? Uh, no. Uh, what you need to do, what you need to do, <laughs> uh, what you need to do is you have to expand 1 plus sine theta squared. Okay. So here's what you get. 1 plus uh, 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta. Uh, is that it? If I expand it, is that all I get? Okay, so now I can, I can integrate term by term. So notice that, first of all, I'm going to get half 0 to 2 pi of 1 d theta. Second term, I have a 2 there, right? So let's, that 2 and a half will count. Why is it happening to me all the time? Okay, so this is, uh, this is 0 to 2 pi. You see that 2 and a half cancels out. I have sine theta uh, d theta plus half integral from 0 to 2 pi uh, sine squared theta d theta. Now, uh, well, the first one is pretty easy, right? It will be half times integral of 1 is theta, right? So you'll be evaluating theta at 2 pi and 0 and you'll be subtracting. So wouldn't you get just 2 pi at the end? And then for the second integral, the antiderivative is what? The antiderivative for the second one? Negative, in fact, uh, yeah, negative cosine theta, oops, negative cosine theta, uh, which is uh, 2 pi and 0. But you, you do know that it's, it's got to be 0, right? You, you realize that? This integral? Uh, <laughs> you realize that this integral would be 0? Why is that? Remember the sine curve is like this, right? So there is a area above x-axis, area below x-axis, they cancel out, right? Remember the integral gives you net area, right? So they cancel out, it's gotta be zero. And then the, set, the last one, the last one is I have to, well, I have to apply a trick, right? Uh, and what is that? Sine squared of theta is what? That's the same as what you did in the uh, quiz, right? In one of the quizzes. Uh, sine squared of theta, it's half of 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Lo uh, okay, so this is d theta then. And 0 to 2 pi. So I get pi here, the second term vanishes. Um, and the third term, I get a quarter integral from 0 to 2 pi 1 minus cosine 2 theta and what am I getting there? Uh, it's theta uh, minus what? What's the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta? Was that? half times sine 2 theta, right? So you get 2 pi and 0 and we get pi 1 fourth. Okay, if you plug in 2 pi, uh, what do you get? You're going to get a 2 pi for theta when you plug in 2 pi for theta for sine of that, it's 0, right? So that's all you get. And when you plug in 0, you, you get 0, right? So that's all I have. Uh, so then what do I have there? It's half pi, pi plus half pi, right? <coughs> Am I getting 3 pi over 2 at the end? Everybody's okay? Questions at all? on this. Everybody's doing okay with this? Alright, so I am going to uh, finish early. Okay. So
So this is it. Uh, please look at the homework. If you have questions, let me know. Your next quiz on Friday will be over 10.3 and 10.4. Next week, Friday, the quiz will be 10.3, 10.4.